Hey there, it's Jason Stahl with another episode of Body Shop Business, the podcast. And oh my gosh, I have a very special guest that everyone's going to recognize from the Body Banging Podcast. Yes, indeed. Yay! I'm turning the tables today. I'm putting Mickey Woods in the hot seat. How you doing, Mickey? <laughs> I'm in the hot seat. What a change. I'm That's doing right. Great. Thanks. You are the interviewee now, and I am the interviewer. So this yes. is going to be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. Awesome. So my first question to you is, gosh, you know, Body Banging, the podcast has exploded. You know, you started a few years ago, and it's gotten more and more popular. And probably the pinnacle of that popularity was the Southeast Collision Conference. Mm. Tell me how the podcast is going. You know, Jason, it has been such a blessing to watch this evolve. It was really a passion project for me, how it started. I, like I saw the need, especially in COVID, saw the need for information for shops. And it felt like we were all drinking from a fire hose. And I thought, you know, we've got to find a way where we can get information out to these shops, helpful information that they can take and do something with and take it back to their shop that very day, not overwhelm them with so much stuff. And so hence the Body Banging Podcast was birthed. And so it was kind of like one of those things. I had a lot of naysayers saying like, don't do it, don't do it that way, you should do it this way. And I was like, you know, I just really feel called to do the do a podcast and do it this way. And if it doesn't work, that's on me. It's my show, it's on me if it fails. And the response that I got right out of the gate was so supportive, so powerful. And then over the last three years since it's grown, I mean, the exposure is crazy. Like we always in marketing want raving fans. And I feel like my body bang and followers are so freaking awesome. Like they want swag. They want the gear. They, they, I, they share it. When I post about it, they're sharing the post. It's just, it's a blessing. Honestly, that's like the perfect word for it. It's such a blessing. I'm glad you mentioned that because I've seen the hat, I've seen the shirt, <laughs> and I want. <laughs> yes, I will be getting you one. Don't All you worry. right. The whole city of Cleveland's going to know about body banging after I get a shirt. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so With how my many... face on it and everything. That's right. That's right. So how many YouTube followers do you have now? Well, it's exciting because when I first started, I was excited to get when I remember when I hit 10 followers and I was like running around my house telling my kids, oh, my gosh, I got 10 followers on YouTube. <laughs> and then when I hit 25 and then 100 and now we're at what was it? We looked a little bit earlier, 493. So we almost are at 500. So if you're watching this and haven't subscribed, let's do it. Let's hit that 500. Uh it, awesome. I, I'm super excited about it. It's it, it's it's crazy to see the growth from where it started. It feels like it's happened so quickly. So tell me, um, this might be hard to do, but can you single out one guest from your past podcast that was just super fun or? You know, every episode I have, I feel like it's a different experience. I really enjoy being around people. And so to connect with people, everybody's different. Everybody that comes on the show, I vet them before they come on the show. So they've got to be a pretty personable person. And uh, I, we, I always enjoy what I do. So we have a lot of fun. So I feel like it's hard to pick one, but I will tell you um, a couple come to mind. First and foremost, Mike Anderson, because... <laughs> It's Mike Anderson. And it was like, yeah, the first time I interviewed him, I literally was like starstruck. I I, <laughs> I don't know how it sounded. I listened to the podcast back and I was like, wow, it sounded like I was totally natural. And on the inside, I was like, oh, my gosh, total like fangirl moment. Uh, and I've interviewed him a few times already. And I'll actually uh, be interviewing him again on Sunday. He'll be at the Texas trade show. So uh, and every time... I get just even get near that guy, let alone interview him. I feel like it's just the coolest thing. It's the coolest thing. Uh, 
Another funny thing is Michael Bradshaw and ended up being, he is thus far my most interviewed podca or podcast guest. And Michael Bradshaw is a president of k &M Collision. And it's funny because I didn't realize I had interviewed him so many times, but it just so happened because he was involved with one thing. So I interviewed him. He won the Body Shop Business Executive of the Year Award last year, 2022. So I interviewed him then. Then he was at another conference. So I interviewed him then. And so uh, that's fun because he's he's the most interviewed. So that that was kind of a cool thing to do with him. So now we're now we're best buddies. I told him uh, when I see him at SEMA, he's going to have to interview me because <laughs> I've interviewed him so many times. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, your expertise is marketing. You know, you're a former collision repair facility manager. You're a former collision repair facility owner. And you have this company, Mickey Woods Marketing. Um, I want to ask you, too, how is that going? You know, let's body bang it aside. How is your marketing company going? Um, is it, you know, are you gaining clients? Are you really busy right now? Are shops kind of getting the marketing thing? Um, talk to me about your company. Yeah, that's a great question, actually. So Mickey Woods marketing has also exploded. And part of it is I get, I, I'm noticed in the industry. So, and people have access to me. So I get a lot of calls that are questions. People are want to ask questions. They need some help. They don't necessarily even want to utilize services at that time. They're not ready. Maybe they're like just starting out or they just bought a shop where they were the painter and they bought the shop. So, um, I do a lot of just helpful calls. At the same time, the actual business side paying clients has gone through the roof and more so in the last three months. So it's interesting that you ask that. I think that from what I see, and I work with shops all across the US and in Canada. I talk with a lot of different shops. You know, I'm on the Collision Cocktail Hour. I host the Guild 21 calls for OEC. So I'm part of a lot of different events where I get a chance to talk with shops. And I'm very, I participate a lot on social media. So I feel like I have a good finger on the pulse of the industry. And one thing that does seem to be happening is a lot of shops are slowing down, A. And B, shops are getting so much pushback with insurance companies that they're like, how can we drive more business to the shop? Because insurance companies, were they're, they're struggling to get their the money that they're owed from insurance. So they're like, okay, we need to get more cars in the drive because sometimes some shops will just take whatever insurance gives them. Well, then their profit margin's low. So it's like, how do we drive more business to the door? So there's a lot of different things going on in our industry right now. And a lot of people do realize more so, I think, than, the, than before the power of marketing and helping them get new cars in the drive. So uh, to sum it all up, yes, it's going great. <laughs> and lately, I have been even busier than normal. I mean, just the other day, I had five calls in one day, people reaching out looking for to bring marketing on because they want to grow their business because things have slowed down for them or they're a younger business and they want to really get get going and ramp up interesting. so interesting yeah because you know a while ago we were hearing that shops were just slammed with work like anywhere from two week to six week backlogs and my yeah. next question to you was what if a shop says, you know, Mickey, I'm slammed with work. I don't need to market because I've got all the work. Used to be that shops had to, you know, didn't have enough work and now they're overflowing yeah. with work. What would you tell totally. the shop that says, you know what, I got enough work. I don't need marketing. Yeah. And that is happening uh, a lot. We see that with a lot of the MSOs. A lot of MSOs are booked out because they have a lot of DRP relationships. So they're getting flooded with work, which really assists the independents who are finding themselves a little slower, well, if you've got availability now, let's market that because people don't wanna wait two weeks or two months to get their car in. So we're able to use that on the marketing side to drive them more business and take advantage of the people that are unhappy having to wait. Uh, for the shops that are super busy, I always have said, will say, will continue to say that there's no better time to market than when you're doing well, lay the foundation because our business is cyclical. Things happen. Things will slow down. I, you know, we don't know to what depth they'll dip down. But when you're doing marketing, it helps you 
avoid those big drastic drops because it continues to maintain a certain funnel of work. And we can gas pedal that. We can push push on that and push you more work when you need it. And then we can back it off a little bit when you're just so slammed you can't even see straight. So there's the balance. So a good marketer is going to create a marketing strategy for you based off of your shop and your goals and what you've got going on, what your team can handle. Because you also don't want to push on marketing if you're so busy and then you're dropping the ball, you piss people off, they're never going to come back. So there is definitely finding that balance. So finding a marketer that understands that, that can help you strategize what that looks like. You can still do a low level marketing that at least builds some type of foundation for you. It's harder, just like if you were to run a sprint, there's a reason why people get in the starting blocks to prep, to be in the best stance possible. They don't just start standing straight up. So when you are doing some type of marketing, that's putting yourself in those blocks. So when the time comes that you need to push more, it's much easier to get you ramped up faster versus from a complete standstill, which we saw a lot in COVID. Shops that were doing marketing prior to COVID, they fared much better than the shops that called in a panic and we had to start from, you know, you got nothing coming in and now we have to build you up. It's it's just takes longer. You mentioned earlier that, you know, It'd be wise for the independent shop to market that, hey, we're available when the MSOs are all booked out. That kind of leads, leads to my next question because I wanted to ask you, it would appear that with consolidation going crazy and more and more uh, of these national brands entering your marketplace, how does the independent survive? It would seem to me that the independent shop would, more than anybody, need marketing assistance from, uh, from a person like you. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but what are the things that they should be doing or could be doing right now to to compete against the the the, the big box stores coming into town? Yeah, well, with my company, it's typically doing paid marketing. So we find that for our clients, there are certain few things that we know work really well to get you work in the door really quickly, see a nice fat return on that investment. So obviously, we're going to go to those things again, depending on your shop, where you're at, all those things. The shop, though, can do parts on their end that don't require necessarily a marketer. For instance, when you are slower, a lot of the complaints we hear from customers and guests are that they are feeling like they're processed when they go to another shop because they're a number. It's like they're, they're just slammed. You know, it's like going to a busy deli. You got the number, you wait for them to call your number and they're like, bing, bang, boom, out you go. One of the things that sh independent shops can really do well right now, if you have the capacity is, which I think you should always make the capacity, is slow it down, give that person who is there in front of you the compassion, understanding that you that this person just got into a tragic accident, um, because they're even if they're not physically harmed, they are they are put out by the situation. This is an inconvenience. So. A number one, developing that level of compassion and practicing that rather than coming in, what's wrong with your car? Even when you're answering the phone, are you, I just got into an accident. The first question is, shouldn't be, what are you driving? What's your name? Even what's your name? It's, are you okay? Like having compassion, building that relationship is something that shops that are independents can take advantage of. The MSOs have a lot of metrics that they have to hit. So it's a lot of pressure that they have where they are less likely to do those things. Where an independent, there's so many things we can take advantage of as independents. So I hope that answered the question. Yeah. What, what does the future hold for you, Mickey? I mean, uh, are you going to open a body <laughs> shop in the future again? Try your hand at that again? Or are you going to go on a, a world bus tour with the body banging uh, on board? <laughs> um, <laughs> or, or, uh, uh, is Mickey Woods Marketing going to be in a giant skyscraper someday in downtown Dallas and, you know, reflecting the sunlight off of it? And it's his ultimate. <laughs> what does the future hold for you? The future is boundless, I feel like. It's really, uh, I really have a passion for everything that I do. And I'm always open to exploring 
things that come to the table for me. And I've been offered some incredible things. There are some things in the works that I can't say anything about at the moment. Mm. So we'll see. I know. Mm. So Mm. we'll see what happens with those. Uh, Mickey Woods Marketing continues to grow. We continue to bring on solid staff to be able to deliver quality. My whole thing with scaling my marketing company was I didn't want to lose sight of caring for people, which I think is very relatable for body shops. When we get really big and we get really busy, the care level drops. So um, that's really what I'm focused on in my personal business right now is building a solid business that cares for every one of our clients, every one of our shops, uh, that we are never too busy to be watching everything every day. Uh, For the Body Bang and Podcast, that continues to grow. It has literally taken on a life of its own. So I get asked to speak a lot due to a lot of different factors. I don't get out a lot to speak at events. I will be at SEMA. Um, I have a class called, oh shoot, what did I call it? Um, Becoming a Marketing Jedi. All levels welcome from Padawan to Master. So uh, hopefully you will be joining me at that. That should be I fun. Am very busy at that show, but I promise I will be in the front row. <laughs> At least for five minutes to check you out, maybe take some pictures. (laughs) Yeah, there we go. We'll be giving out some body banging gear. We're going to have a lot of fun. And it's on Halloween. So now I'm trying to decide if I should dress up in costume as like a Princess Leia or something. Is that too much? I don't know. Sounds like fun. It sounds like fun. Well, Mickey, um, I can't thank you enough for what you've done for Body Shop Business and Babcock's Media. I think it was four or five years ago, you emailed me interested in writing for the magazine. And I had to read the email four, four or five times because I was like, there's mm-hmm. no way. She says she's a former auto body shop manager and a former auto body shop owner. And I, th- and I thought it's probably automotive service. You probably mean automotive service. Mm-hmm. And, you know, those are two distinctly different businesses. And, you know, and I was like, oh, my God, she is the real McCoy. And so reached out to you. You wrote articles for us. We did a podcast together for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, We are partnering with your body banging podcast to get it out to the world. And uh, the content you've created for us and helped us with is, I can't thank you enough for us. So really appreciate it. Oh, oh, you gave me the goosies, Jason. (laughs) No, thank you. And You've been such a great ally, a great support, and and such a good friend. So I'm super thankful for you and the whole team. I mean, really, everybody at Babcock's and Body Shop Business has been so wonderful. Uh, you guys are always looking out for body shops and really, really, I'm sure other magazines want to do the same thing in other publications. But Body Shop Business is really puts their foot forward to provide the best, most quality, relevant content for shops and vendors and really anybody in the industry, manufacturers. So I thank you and thank your team. You, I wouldn't have wanted to partner with anybody else. And I'm very particular who I will associate my name with because I hold everything I do in high regard. And you guys, it was it, it was a no-brainer and, and so happy to know you. Well, thank you. And I gave you the goosies and we'll have to do drink seas at SEMA. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yes, yes. So thanks for being I'm on. In. If if somebody wants to um, hire you for their marketing purposes, where do they go? How do they do that? Yes. So you can go to either mickeywoods.com or collisioncentermarketing.com. And all my information is on there. The easiest thing is there's a calendar on the website. You can book a 30-minute free consultation call and uh, book that on there when it's free with for your schedule. And then we can talk about your shop, what you're looking to do, give you some ideas, even if it's just one of those, hey, I got a couple questions kind of thing. I'm up for it. I'm here for you. I am familiar with that calendar. I mean, I even have to book time with you for all, for God's sake, you know, <laughs> you're a busy woman. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. And if you haven't heard the Body Banging Podcast, make sure you go check us out and then also subscribe or follow us if you're listening because it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Body Shop Business puts it out. So if you're following the emails, which you should be, if you're not already, make sure you get on the email list. Um, and then also on YouTube, if you would prefer to watch a video version of it, you can subscribe. That way you get notified when a new one goes live, which is nice, which is every two weeks. One more thing I almost forgot. And the reason I remembered is it's almost happy hour here in Cleveland. 
Collision ah. Cocktail Hour. What is that? Yeah. And when is that? And how did that get started? Collision Cocktail Hour is awesome. I really recommend shops get involved with this. So it's every third Wednesday of the month. And it's a group of us, a ragtag little group of us, or six of us. And um, some of the other co-hosts of mine looped me in on it. And I typically MC the calls, but it's, uh, it's a collaborative thing. It's on Zoom and shop owners come on, some vendors come on, and we talk about the hot topics. Like, what are you guys dealing with right now? Hey, let's talk about ADAS. What are you doing in your shop? Or what are you doing to get your bill paid? That type of thing. And it's not just the hosts that are talking, everybody on the call. I mean, you can hide if you want, but a lot of the people turn their camera on, come on mic, and they have questions or they share what they're doing in their shop to help somebody at another shop. I mean, there are a lot of times where uh, us hosts sit back and the participants can share and kind of go back and forth. And, and we based it off of the cocktail hour when you go to an event. That's when everybody's sharing and helping and coming together. And that's really what this has become. And we've been doing it now for, gosh, like over six months. And the feedback is incredible. I mean, these the shop owners and managers specifically, they love it. It's really helpful for them to help uh, build their business and move it forward and, and get help just one on one. So it's really cool. Awesome. And anybody can join. Yeah. So that's great. And I have yet yeah, to join. I promise caveat. I'm going to be one. Yeah, there you go. The only caveat is no insurance companies because shops are talking about very private things. And if you're interested in joining, you can go to collisioncocktailhour.com and there's a link on there to RSVP and it's through Zoom. So then it'll email you a link and easy peasy. And I really, really suggest that you guys hop on. It's it's typically an hour, although everybody always wants to go more because everybody's chit chatting, having a good time. Uh, so pop on check it out why not awesome thanks again yes. for being on the podcast today mickey thanks jason i'm jason stall thanks for watching thanks everybody for tuning in to body shop business the podcast check out bodyshopbusiness.com for more podcasts